One thing making the fight against racism this year so unique is that people, especially athletes, are protesting and taking a stand around the world. Like in Canada, where student athletes from three Manitoba universities teamed up to create a video to show that while they compete against each other, they stand together against social injustice. Josh Gandier, a member of the University of Winnipeg men's basketball team, and Anthony Sega Kelly of Brandon University's men's basketball team sat down with us to discuss their efforts and those of their fellow athletes to fight racism. Anthony, what was expressed in the video? Uh, in the video, it was just uh, trying to get the message across that no matter the sport that we play, no matter if we go to different schools, uh, whatever it may be, that we're all in this fight together and that uh, uh, racial uh, inequalities and injustice shouldn't be a thing that should be going on anywhere. So just to try to unite all schools and uh, get the message going that no matter the sport or the school that we're all in this fight together. And Josh, where did your group get the idea to do this video and, and how many athletes were involved? Well, we were reached out by our uh, media relations guy, and there's three from UW, I believe three from Brandon, three from U of M. Some, like uh, Anthony was saying, some are all passionate about some that affects us either directly or ind indirectly through one of uh, our friends or teammates. And it's just something we can't be quiet about. Injustice is something that's enabled by being neutral and quiet about. So us speaking up, being together on this, uh, it's the best way to bring it to light. And guys, what I find so interesting about what you're doing is you're doing this from Canada. I think here in America, we think about the protests that are happening here, but we see what's happening around the world. Anthony, what connections do you see between racism and injustice um, that you're seeing from a distance in America and what's experienced in Canada? Personally, since I'm I'm, I'm a black man myself. I feel like uh, having a little brother, having a, a little sister, having a mother, uh, I feel like I'm part of the black community as well. And that doesn't matter if I'm in Canada or in the States that uh, I still have to speak up. But as far as the, the differences and the similarities in uh, Canada and in the States, I would say that uh, in the States, it's more outspoken when it comes to racism. But here in Canada, I feel like some sometimes it might be a little bit uh, kind of hidden, if I can say it, when it comes to racism. I've heard people say the same thing about Europe and other countries. And Josh, I wonder, you're doing this video with other different athletes. You mentioned three across three different universities. I'm imagining that everybody has different perspectives on what they want to say, what they want to put in the video. How did you all manage to get on the same page and uh, create this collective message against racism? Yes, Anthony, about uh, it's not just being an issue that's unique to the States. Like uh, a lot of Canadians will say, Oh, we're multicultural, we are in America, things are better here. Like Anthony was saying, that's hiding it. That's distancing ourselves from the problem. And it's uh, like, was it two months ago, we had an incident in Brandon. And then last week, uh, Joyce Shaquan, she, uh, her death was due to systemic racism. And it's uh, something we've all been impacted. Uh, as athletes and just something we all want to come together and have a unified message together. It's interesting, Josh, you mentioned that need to come together and what's been happening in Canada. So Anthony, it makes me think, what do you feel needs to be done in your opinion in universities and across Canada to address some of the systemic racism that uh, Josh is talking about? Uh, first and foremost, I think that uh, the way that I see it, it needs to start in uh, in our schools, and after that, it's going to go in our cities, and then after that, it's going to go in our, uh, our provinces, which would be states for you guys. So I think that, uh, first of all, it was about bringing awareness, and I think that we did a, a fairly good job about that, but now it's about bringing actual change and then uh, hopefully pushing leagues to have uh, to push schools to have more uh, the athletic directors and people of color in positions of power and positions of uh, decision-making. So I think that all those things are important and then just you know making sure that black students and black student athletes have a, a good time when it comes to school and then that they can enjoy a, their staying at their respective schools so uh for myself like, I, I hope to create environments around myself that are empathetic and caring and like sports you have to practice for it to be successful and not all of us are born being empathetic and caring so it takes all of us individually to lead by example and show, especially our younger generations, how to do this. 
Um, by being more open and aware, we'll recognize each other's experiences, insecurities, worries, and privileges based on our racial backgrounds. And I believe this will have a ripple effect on our communities and the worlds across countries. And it just takes courage from people in positions of privilege like myself and Anthony to speak up on injustice and foster care and environments. It's a great point, Josh, and I'm glad both of you are speaking up as well as your fellow student athletes. Anthony Sega Kelly, Josh Candier, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Time.